Let's go first to Kate then from London on line one. Kate, good morning. Good morning, Matthew. So what do we make of this uh, trend from adopting from abroad? Well, I can't say that I agree with uh, Angelina Jolie and Madonna because I doubt that either of them um, look after their child 24 hours a day, which I did. Uh, we adopted a little girl from El Salvador 22 years ago. Uh, my husband is Japanese. I'm American. We've lived here for 36 years. I couldn't have children. We were, we were too old to adopt in this country. Right. We were told that if we were lucky, we might be able to foster a, a problem or handicapped child. Mm -hmm. um, at the age of 15, our daughter contracted aplastic anemia. Uh, and over three years, she had 210 units of blood and 197 pools of platelets just to keep her alive. Right. They finally found a donor for her in Texas when they thought they never would because of her ethnicity. Um, she did her GCSEs and A-levels all the way through that. She got her degree. She's now working on her master's. She's never looked back, and she said to us, if you hadn't adopted me, I'd be dead now. And also, you, you make the point about the fact you were too old to adopt in this country. Again, you know, when Matthew says what's wrong with adopting at home, you'll often find that yeah, people who are right. adopting abroad different. have been prevented from adopting at home. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and because of, of where we came from as well. Um, we, we weren't British. I'd have a British passport now, and my daughter has a British passport. But she Every, Everybody still gets a British passport these days, Kate. Salvador. You're not special. <laughs> she does not give up her... Salvadorian passport because she says that's who I am. Okay, okay, Kate, great testimony, I have to say, in favour. A really good story, appreciate it. That's We're going to hear from Sandra now in Shropshire on line four. Sandra, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we've got a problem with adopting uh, from abroad? Yes, I do. I think it's disgusting. Absolutely. Why? Why? Well, I adopted my daughter 21 years ago. And, um, I mean, she was a white baby, but if we weren't uh, eligible for a white baby, we were offered the chance to uh, adopt an ethnic baby, yeah. which we were quite prepared to do, yeah. but I wanted to know more about the culture so that you could bring that baby up in that culture. Right, okay, so you keep them in touch with their roots, and what, you have a concern that people that adopt from abroad, by and large, don't do that? I don't think they will, no, because they'll just be brought up westernised, and then later down the line they'll want to know about their own culture. Okay, okay, but then Sandra, can you balance out the fact that in some of these cases, these children would have had miserable, miserable, hard lives back in the countries yes, of their children, birth. There's lots of children in this country have miserable, hard lives. They live on the streets and all that kind That's of thing. That's true enough. You don't see people going by in them, do you? It's very true. Very true. Sandra, thank you for the call. Let's have another. This is Adrian now from Liverpool on line five. Adrian, good morning. Oh, hi. Hi there. Uh, what do we think about this adopting across uh, from different countries? I find it awful, and it does remind me of the slave trade when white people had um, pets from, mm. um, you know, they'd bring home a pet. Have you, uh, do you, have, have you been involved in adoption yourself, Adrian? Yeah, I'm a black child who was adopted by white parents. Wonderful, wonderful parents, but who I cannot, to this day, 42 years later, I still could not discuss the problems of growing up in this country as a black person. What, because? Because they've got no understanding of it. They have no comprehension. It's something like, get over it, um, you're making it sound worse than it is. They, 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 they don't understand what it is to grow up. Um, as the way this country has no history of um, black people in this country, or um, contribution to this country, we are, all, to this day, we're still seen as we've, we've come in and we've taken from white people here. We haven't contributed. I mean, we've been here for 500 years, but you'd think we'd only come over in the 60s. Well, maybe. I mean, there's, I think it depends where you live. I think it depends on... Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's yeah, a it, much it, different place. Yeah. I lived in London for a long time, but... As I said, I've got a friend who's been in exactly your position, and she says a, a similar thing, that there was, there was a, a gulf between what her parents... Because her parents had no concept of what it was like to be black, and, and, and there was a, there was a difference. Uh, Louise, uh, for, forgive me for you, I want to get one more in if I can. This is Louise from York, then on line two. Louise, I'm going to make this a quick one. What do you uh, think about? Hi there, um, I do agree. I think it's a really good idea. Um, I'm actually obviously only 19, um, right. but I found out that I can't have children. 
Right. So I'm having to have a hysterectomy next year. Okay. And I think that it's wrong that, you know, children who just don't have a chance in life abroad wouldn't have the opportunity to be somewhere, you know, where they'd be in a stable environment. Okay, but what if that stable environment means they are removed from their culture, that they grow up feeling like Adrienne, uh, right. alienated from their own parents? I, I, I completely agree with that. But I do actually um, sponsor child abroad. And basically, without our help, they wouldn't have a future. They basically, they'd probably live to about six or seven and die of hunger, or, and then they wouldn't have a future at all. I just think that they all deserve a chance. So okay. There's nothing wrong with giving them a culture here. Uh, okay, I, I, I hear you. I've, I've got to interrupt because we've got to go and pay the bills with the ads. But I can tell, uh, Corinne was saying in my ear that we, we've had loads and loads and loads of calls. Split pretty much right down the middle? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, pretty Interesting. much. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we've got to go. Uh,